It's all about the vinyl, the vinyl, no CDs. It's all about the vinyl, the vinyl, no CDs. Greetings one and all and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. It is time to just let loose, have a little fun, and that means it is time for my February playlist video. This is the one where I just talk about the music that I've listened to just for fun over the past month. I am really loving these uh, low prep videos, the l few to no notes videos, the ones where I can just talk freeform, have some fun, not have to concentrate. Uh, Backtracks is the one exception, that's the info intensive one where I follow a script very closely, but otherwise it's especially in the last few weeks uh, I've come to realize how much fun I have with these off-the-cuff kind of videos. So you might be seeing more of that than of the scripted or semi-scripted content in my channel. Possibly. Who knows? But then that's the beauty of YouTube. I don't know what this channel is going to be two months from now. So, And kind of along that same line of thinking, uh, I'm not sure what the playlist video is going to be from one month to the next. For instance, uh, last month it was pretty much all CDs that I talked about. Actually, it was all CDs, because that was what I listened to uh, during the month. And this month it is actually all about the vinyl. Yes, I, uh, I gave the vinyl some love this month, and uh, a part of it was uh, I kind of engineered it that way because I realized toward the beginning of this month that the end of this month, February 28th, will have been the six-month anniversary of the closure of Skips Records and CD World. Yes, if you can believe it, I have been without Skips for six months. Uh, part of me is I can't believe it's been that long, but part of me can't believe it hasn't been longer. So uh, I think I phrased that right. But anyway... Uh, yeah, it's been six months since I've been without skips, and, uh, well, with me being me, uh, a lot of the vinyl records that I bought during skips going out of business sale, I hadn't yet listened to. I know, chastise me if you will, that's, but it's kind of like, you know, uh, that's me. I, I buy stuff, and sometimes I just take forever to get around to listening to it. I've, it's been hard for me to get into the habit of, at night as I'm winding down for bed, putting on a record. I don't know why I don't do that more. It's just, it, it's incredibly relaxing a lot of the time. So, but yeah, this this month I have kind of gotten myself, uh, worked myself into uh, doing that more and more often. So, uh, but anyway, yes, I have 10 record albums. I believe it's 10 that I will be talking about today that I've listened to and uh, for the most part really enjoyed. Uh, this first one actually though, I didn't buy it skips. I actually bought it uh, quite a bit earlier than that. So uh, yes, this one has been sitting on my shelf for I think a year or more and I just hadn't gotten around to listening to it until last week. Uh, it is uh, The Tour, the country covers album by Cindy Lauper. Uh, yes, uh, I got this at the FYE store up in Salem, Oregon, uh, which uh, is one of the largest, it, it's the largest FYE in the state of Oregon. It might be the largest in the country. I'm not sure about that. But yeah, they were having a buy two, get one free sale on most of their vinyl LPs. So this was part of that sale. So. And yeah, and I've really been enjoying this album. Uh, it's got, uh, as I said, it's her country covers album. She covers Funnel of Love, which I believe Wanda Jackson made famous. I, I hope I've got that name right. And a couple of um, uh, Patsy Cline covers, Walking After Midnight and I Fall to Pieces, which are wonderful. She does great jobs on those. She actually uh, uh, turns up the beats on uh, uh, Walking After Midnight. She makes it a bit more of an upbeat song than the Patsy Cline version. So that's really good. And uh, the, the guest uh, artists on here, uh, Emmy Lou Harris, Willie Nelson, Vince Gill, Alison Krauss, and Jewel all appear on this album. So that makes it even, even more fun uh, to listen to. And uh, <laughs> one of the highlights, the, the Vince Gill duet she has is, I, I gotta say, I said this before, I love the titles of country songs. This one is called, You're the Reason Our Kids Are Ugly. And, and believe it or not, though, it actually is a love song. It's not a you done me wrong song. It's actually a love song. Very cute. I, I love the lyrics and that. It's very, very fun. But yeah, Heartaches by the Number, The End of the World. I mean, it's just some classic, classic country songs on here. This is a really good album. Her vocals, that's the one problem is her vocals are a little bit inconsistent from song to song. Some of them she does really well and others, hmm, not the best. Uh, maybe not the best suited for her voice. But uh, yeah, overall, it's a very enjoyable album. If you like country songs, or if you really like Cyndi Lauper, give it a try. It's really good. Uh, this next one, uh, the rest of these I did buy at Skips uh, during the going out of business sale. This one is a double LP, Family Dinner Volume 2 by Snarky Puppy. I've talked about Snarky Puppy before. Uh, they were in my uh, list of favorite albums of 2019. And this one is a 
it's a, I believe it's a combination. <laughs> it's been a couple weeks since I've listened to it, so I cannot remember. And it was at night, so forgive me. But I believe it is a combination of live tracks and studio tracks. But it's got a great list of, I mean, you can see here the list of uh, guest artists on here is numerous. Uh, one of the big draws for this, for me, was Jacob Collier. I'm a big fan of his. I love his stuff, so any album that he appears on is going to uh, get some attention from me. But yeah, also David Crosby shows up on one track. And uh, Laura Mvula, she is a an African singer, jazz singer. I've ha I had one of her albums a while ago. I, I must have gotten rid of it at some point. I'm kind of regretting that now because uh, Sing to the Moon is the song that uh, that they do featuring Laura, M Laura Mvula. And that was on the album that I got, got rid of. And so hearing that song again makes me wish I hadn't got rid of that album. So uh, I will... Chances are, if I, if I know me, I will be picking that up on CD next time I see it. But uh, yeah, this has a combination of uh, smooth jazz type of numbers, uh, some more upbeat stuff. It's got some African rhythms on it. Just a whole, a wide, wide variety of stuff. It's got some Latin stuff on here. So this is just great stuff. If you like stuff that's out of the ordinary, uh, most of the stuff, if I recall, is vocals. Uh, Snarky Puppy is known for their instrumental stuff, but this and this does have some instrumentals on it. But it's a, very, a mixture of vocal and inst instrumental and a mixture of uh, wide different uh, varieties of, of music. So I would highly recommend checking this out. Uh, and also, this actually came with a DVD, which I haven't played yet. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, I got this when Skip's Going Out of Business Sale was at 50%, 60%, something like that. So I got this for a steal for having two, al two LPs and a DVD in it. And it was well, well worth it. It's, it's some, that is some great music for listening to at night and relaxing. And uh, this next one is probably my favorite of the bunch. I, I picked it up totally on impulse. I had never heard of this guy before, but I'm so glad that the impulse struck. It is Trapper Shep, and this is his album Rangers and Valentines. It is great indie rock stuff. Uh, it's just it's fantastic. I, I don't know what I can say about it. It's kind of like um, it's just got that classic indie rock singer-songwriter kind of sound. I don't know how to express it better than that. Uh, I, I highly recommend checking this out on, on streaming. I'm sure Spotify has it. And I am definitely going to be uh, looking for some uh, more of his albums because this was just a great, great first impression. He left a great impression on me. I cannot remember anything that really made any of the songs stand out, but uh, trust me, it's very much worth listening. Great, great album of uh, indie rock stuff, singer-songwriter type of stuff going from the favorite of the bunch to probably the least favorite and it pains me to say that because i love this guy's acting i've uh it's uh, dennis quaid and the sharks uh out of the box is the name of the album this is actually the debut album by dennis quaid and his band but yeah it just seemed and again as i said it pains me to say this because i love dennis quaid as an actor some of his uh, movies particularly that lean towards sci-fi are some of my favorites but yeah this just seemed very formulaic stuff here uh the lyrics were, you know, just not the best lyrics. The arrangements were kind of, you know, there were no surprises in it. And uh, it was competent, but not really ear-grabbing. And that's, you know, so, yeah. In total fairness, you might find this a lot more appealing than I did. Who knows? Uh, maybe I'm just hard to please in that respect. But uh, And maybe I was expecting a lot because it was Dennis Quaid. But, yeah, unfortunately, sad to say, I was left rather cold by this. Sorry, Dennis. Anyway, back to the uh, better albums in the bunch. Uh, you've probably heard of these guys, The Temptations. Uh, yeah, this is one, uh, their latest album, All the Time. And this is just a great album. These guys are in top form. I I'm sure it's not all or the original members of The Temptations. I'm sure that they've there's been some turnover over the years. But this is a great album. It has uh, a lot of covers on it. It has a cover of Stay With Me by Sam Smith, a cover of Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran, um, uh, John Mayer, Still Feel Like Your Man, as well as uh, When I Was Your Man by Bruno Mars. I mean, this has a bunch of covers on it and some great, uh, I don't know if there are any original, yeah, there are some original stuff on here because uh, some songs written by Otis Williams. So yeah, this is a great, great mixture of classic uh, old school R&B with some, you know, new takes on recent uh, pop songs and, and rock songs. So I highly recommend this album all the time by The Temptations. Fantastic stuff here. And then on to another double LP that I found at Skip's. Uh, Van Morrison, Reworking the Catalog. It's a duets album that he put out. Sorry about the light. I keep hitting the uh, reflection of the light on there. 
but yeah, George Benson, Natalie Cole, Gregory Porter, Steve Winwood, Michael Buble, Mark Knopfler, the list goes on. I mean, just an all-star duets album here. And I'm actually not familiar with very many of the songs in their original forms, so uh, so I don't have any basis for comparison regarding these arrangements to the originals. But it's a very entertaining album. I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, of course, you know how much of a fan I am of Michael Buble and uh, George Benson. Joss Stone is on here also. Uh, so yeah, just a, a fantastic album. Uh, I, I would recommend uh, yet another one I would recommend. This is... Uh, this bunch of albums is pretty, pretty uh, solid here, I have to say. So I, I made some good purchases without, uh, you know, never having heard the albums before buying them. So uh, yeah, a lot of these were, well, a lot of more kind of impulse buys, I guess I'd, I guess you'd say, because, you know, hey, Skips wasn't going to be around for much longer. So plus the deals, I mean, hey. But yeah, very, very good album by uh, Van Morrison, a duet's album, Reworking the Catalog. Check it out. And then we have a couple of what I think were my first LP purchases from Skip's Going Out of Business sale. And uh, this was when the sale was 30 or 35%, and uh, he still had these, which was kind of surprising. It was a pair of Paul McCartney albums, uh, yeah, Pipes of Peace and Tug of War. Both very, very fun. I had never actually listened to these two albums in their, in their original formats all the way through. I was familiar with the singles, obviously. But uh, yeah, lots of fun. These two albums are just excellent, fantastic very proud to add these to my collection and at the prices I got them at. You cannot complain. I mean, honestly, uh, Take It Away is uh, one of my favorite songs of Paul McCartney's at all. And it's one of the singles off this album, Tug of War. And of course, Ebony and Ivory, a very, very cheesy song now, but uh, it's, it's a sentimental favorite. Uh, my sister sang it. Uh, I have a memory of my sister singing it at, I think it was some kind of a church function. It, it took place at the church anyway. And I don't know if it was a talent show or whatever, but uh, that's how I came to really love the song, was that she sang it. I think it was a duet with a friend there at this church function of some sort. So that's become a lifetime sentimental favorite of mine, and that is one of the songs on Tug of War. And Pipes of Peace, of course, has uh, Say, Say, Say with uh, Michael Jackson. And uh, Michael Jackson makes a couple of appearances on this album, actually, uh, Pipes of Peace. And yeah, just a, a great album. Ringo Starr is, of course, on here. Stanley Clark is uh, one of the uh, other guest artists on here. So yeah, an excellent pair of Paul McCartney albums. Uh, they were both produced by George Martin. So that uh, kind of go stands to reason that they have a little bit of that Beatles sound to them. So, But yeah, great pair of albums here. Very happy to have uh, started my Paul McCartney vinyl collection at Skip's Records and CD World. And then finishing off the stack of albums here, I have a pair of female artists, female jazz artists for you. Uh, the first one I have mentioned a few times on my channel, I believe. Uh, her name is Nellie Mackay, and this is her most recent album, I think, Sister Orchid. And uh, she actually did an in-store at Skip's uh, during the uh, release, promo release junket for this album. Uh, unfortunately, I did not go to that in-store. I was not the Nellie Mackay fan back then that I am now, uh, so I'm really regret that I missed that. And uh, But this is, anyway, this is an album of covers of American Songbook Standards, uh, Rogers and Hart, Hoagie Carmichael, Johnny Mercer, that kind of stuff. Uh, very, very good album. Excellent album. And uh, her voice is, I've mentioned this before, her voice is a little bit idiosyncratic. Uh, I mean, she's an excellent vocalist. It's just, it's hard to describe what her voice does. It's slightly off-key, and the delivery that she does is a little bit odd. It's probably not the best delivery for these types of songs, but I still think this is a good album. It's probably just because I'm used to Nellie Mackay's voice. In the grand scheme of things, probably not the best interpretations of these kinds of songs, but hey, I like Nellie Mackay, and I think this is a pretty darn good album, so there you have it. Take with that what you will. Uh, yeah, but yeah, don't be afraid to check this out. If you like the uh, uh, American Songbook standards, especially um, slightly interesting interpretations of those kinds of songs, check it out. And finally, on today's playlist, we have an artist that I know I've mentioned before. I've got three of her CDs. This is the first album of hers that I picked up on vinyl. It is Liz Wright and her album, Grace. This is, I believe, her fifth album. I've got her first, second, and third albums, so I don't have the one before this. But yeah, this, as I said, is the first one of hers that I have on vinyl. And it's just, it's, it's in keeping with her previous albums that I've got. Just excellent stuff. She's a fantastic vocalist, beautiful voice. Uh, wonderful arrangements, just very, very moody, very uh, R&B-ish uh, 
more on the jazz side of R&B, not contemporary R&B, but yeah, just uh, excellent stuff. And I couldn't, uh, let's see, oh, Every Grain of Sand is the song on here that is just fantastic, really caught my ear. Um, but hey, any song on here, you, you really can't miss with any song on this album. She's just wonderful at what she does. Uh, if you have not checked out Liz Wright, I strongly recommend it. Uh, if you like jazz vocals particularly. But uh, yeah, and I am probably going to seek out her, her fourth album uh, in her discography. So yeah, I gotta say I did some, I did pretty well uh, buying stuff from Skip's Going Out of Business Sale. It was uh, wonderful. I'm, I'm still so sorry to see Skip uh, gone, uh, Skip's store that is gone. Skip is alive and well, don't worry, and enjoying his retirement. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, um, since I filmed my last Skip video, I actually got another piece of memorabilia from his store. This was actually courtesy of my brother. My brother, uh, sometimes I would just want to slap him across the head, but other times uh, he just does amazing things that just surprise the hell out of you. And this is what he did for my birthday back in November. I come home from work and I find in the living room this big thing, big boxy thing with a sheet wrapped over it and a bow around it. And I, it took me a few minutes to wonder, what the heck is this? What did he give me? And then I started recognizing the shape. And I thought, oh no, he didn't do that. He didn't. And sure enough, I pulled the sheet off, and he did. As Skips was closing, he snuck over there and picked up actually two of the CD listening stations from his store. Uh, my brother's keeping one for out in his workshop. But yes, he gave me the other one. And the only reason I didn't pick one up uh, while the store was closing was because uh, I, I knew that there just wasn't room for it in my bedroom. But hey, when I saw that one, that he had picked that one up for me, I decided, okay, I'm going to make some room in my bedroom. So I spent a couple of weekends. This was probably one of the weekends back in November when you didn't get a video from me. Uh, I was spending time rearranging my room, a good portion of my room, trying to find a place to put this thing. And yes, I, as you can see, I finally found a place to put it. And yes, the, the listening stations, it wasn't just the cabinet, it came with the CD changers, which which are still in working order. Mine is in perfect working order, and of course the headphones that came with them too. So uh, I have not put CDs in them. Uh, I usually listen to CDs on my uh, five disc CD changer, what I, which I have right here next to me. So, uh, but anyway, it is just a fantastic, amazing, uh, one more piece of memorabilia from Skip's Records and CD World that will live on forever in my little bedroom here. Uh, so yeah, along with the uh, floor mat that I got from the store and a couple of uh, CD racks, uh, uh, CD cases that I got. Uh, I'm just so thrilled and blessed beyond measure, I think, for uh, being able to, as I said, bring home some little memories, a uh, few more memories and a few more pieces of skips to treasure for as long as I live, hopefully. So uh, anyway, yes, uh, enough with my rambling. Uh, and enough with my remembrances of skips. You're probably tired of hearing them uh, by now. But anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos. And be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be music snob.